Greetings and salutations fellow gamers, Lukey P here uh, with another episode of Supreme Ruler Ultimate. So picking up where we left off last time, uh, we're just going to tweak our domestic oil prices a tad. Uh, let's put them down to 80%, see what that does. Okay, so in case anybody doesn't remember. Uh, we've got one bunch of engineers marching somewhere over to our rubber fields around about here. Uh, what's going on? The Hindenburg burns. Uh, again, a real historical event and a not particularly nice one. Japan has declared war on the USSR in 1937. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be interesting to watch, which we might do for a little bit. Uh, difficult to tell because they're the same colours, but since Japan declared the war, you'd expect them to pick up a little bit of land. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, we still do deals for you. Um, yeah, that might not have been the smartest war for Japan to declare, but let's see. Um, I wonder if they're also at war with China. I know they have a historically triggered event, which I saw a little bit earlier, to um, threaten China. But I don't know if they actually went to war with them. No, they've only got one enemy region, which is the USSR. Uh, okay. Well, there you go. A little bit of an unexpected war. Normally it's Germany who tries to take out Russia. Uh, it's Japan instead. Uh, yeah, so you want to buy it roughly at production costs and we can sell it at a lot bigger markup than that. I think Ethiopia, we're going to reject that and see if you come back with a slightly better offer. You can see our economy is pretty much balanced at the moment. Uh, yeah, we accept that. Uh, it's gone up a little bit now because our deal with China's just been renewed but it's kind of hovering around the right amounts uh, not making massive amount of money but we are um, stable uh, we're always making excess oil we're increasing our industrial uh, yeah we're just generally quite well balanced here um, we want to be making as much money as possible because at some point we're going to invest in our um, our research, which is very expensive. Um, so uh, that would be a military one. Let me just show you that. So our research centre, it costs nearly half a, half a billion. So that would take so three of those would be more than uh, would be about the same as our entire uh, treasury right now. It costs thirty one thousand industrial goods, which isn't too bad um, and the reason it's not too bad is it's spread over 640 days so there's 640 days of spending money um, building this so yeah um, it's something which is good to do I normally like to uh, you know by about 10 years in have loads and loads of research plants but uh, right now it's not something we're going to be looking at Um, so we're not really doing much at the moment, which is a bit frustrating on a let's play. <laughs> yeah, let's just march those guys up there and make that group two. Um, we are now, you see, with um, with that supply having improved again to 100%, we are now at the point where we are literally off the same two oil plants we had at the start we're now in a surplus whereas before we were running a, a reasonable deficit so that's good what we do is we will build up more ore mines while we're up there we'll probably then turn them straight off but again it's just building that capacity for the future so let's just have a look how much they take so they take 12,000 each so uh, So uh, 
Yeah, we can afford to build. We can build four, I think. Let me get that engineer's right on top of it. And we can build four because even though it's marginally more than we've got in reserve, we're making uh, more per day than we were spending without the construction. And you see now, because we're building and our economy is more or less balanced, now it's kind of, uh, it's just dropping by a million a day, which again, nothing to be concerned about. We keep ticking along. Keep ticking along. Let's have a little look, see what. Okay, so Japan is taking some land. It's kind of probably a little bit back and forth. Oh, they're taking some land down here. That's interesting. I wonder if they want to buy any oil for... Oh, hello. Look at that. They're now hostile to us. And the USSR are cold to us. So if I was to go and offer these guys oil now, you watch it what happens here, I think. So if I offer them... Yeah, they only want to pay me a 2 million markup versus what they were doing before. And the reason for that is their relationship with me is now not very good. Not really sure why. That didn't do anything to them. <laughs> Harmonist Stanley Baldwin, Conservative Neville Chamberlain has become Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, pledging another European war would not occur. Historical Stanley Baldwin, one of the lesser known UK Prime Ministers. Um, he was actually Prime Minister, I think, for a fair while. Um, let's just see what the UK give us. So 10 million barrels goes for 112 million. Germany. Germany's going to offer us more. The US. We're obviously going to sell all these 10 million, but we're just trying to baseline. The US is roughly even Stevens. Uh, who I sometimes want sort of oil? China. I think we're about there, are we? So 102. So. Germany we sell the first lot to because they're offering the best deal so they've accepted that this time oh and you can actually see what other countries are developing um, so they get a little note these little envelopes above their capital which you can t just find out a bit about what they're actually developing which can be useful if you're waiting for a country to develop a particular um, particular unit so for example I'm waiting for uh, uh. also a PNRE must be their engineer I wonder if they sell me a motorized peer and any they will do I think just have a look and see if the UK was set up purely because I'd prefer to have it called motorized engineer uh, okay. I would love to just read a bit more about that unit to see if it does what I think it does. Let's buy it in anyway, and if it's not what we think it is, it's only two million. Right little look see if we go and we say we want to so there you see it's an engineer so we've got courtesy of Germany a motorized engineer quite a long way ahead of schedule um, so we want to delete the six we were planning two three four five six and I want to replace them with, you can see they only cost six days longer. So we'll finish off this. Um, this batch of six. Just because I quite like to have them all in the same batch of sixes. And then we'll build six motor, motorized uh, PR Renees or whatever they are. 
Uh, yeah, fine. We still trade with China. Our oil situation is fine. Our industry situation, we may want to address. So, if you look at that, look how low that is on the market now. We're back down to below 1,800. So let's just see who's got a big surplus of industry goods. So the UK. Italy. Uh, probably not really. Oh, Italy will actually sell us the goods for less than they cost to build them. Let's see how far that goes. So if I offer to buy 100 million, they'll sell me that for 98 million. Okay. I thank Italy very much for their generosity. Uh, and they've come back and said they want a million more, which is basically selling at cost, so that's fine. That was very generous of Italy. <laughs> uh, some of the strange quirks of this game. Let's see what Germany want for theirs. So 205 million and 190 million. So let's see if we can just clear them out because we've got the cash. And this will just make, we're basically building a buffer to build within the future. Yep. So it's fine. So what that's done is, I mean, obviously it's dropped our treasury right then, but we've now got a nice little stock of stuff to build with. And we've got them at a really good price. We've got them below cost from both Italy and Germany. And as I said, industry goods is normally the bottleneck on this game. Let's see what... Yeah, I don't think um, the US like us as much as Germany and Italy. Let's just sell them a tiny amount of oil. Okay, it's going to go at cost, fine. Uh, just to try and help maintain our relationships. If you've got one of the strongest nations in the world on your northern border, you want to maintain a good relationship with them. It's interesting to note that um, part of South America is going Axis. So Argentina have joined the Axis, which is always interesting because um, uh, again on the earlier let's play I, well not let's play I didn't record it for YouTube but I played through with Brazil myself a game uh, offline and I think Argentina went allied so whatever the trigger is it's gone the other way <laughs> there you go look at Czechoslovakia that's a nice amount of agriculture and um, they're willing to pay us for so good for them let's keep on going I'm just having a little check around, see everything's still balanced, which it is. Coal, we're fine on importing, because like we said, it costs as much to make us to import. Metal production, we've got plenty now. Um, and that's because these finished up here while I wasn't watching. So they recommend we lower the price of consumer goods. Our employment rate has got even worse. Um, so what we don't need is we don't need these four new ones on so we're going to turn off four of them and we're going to set this to be a hundred and five percent of demand so it's just got a hundred and one percent i'm not sure it's going to make a massive amount of difference so uh, again we've got plenty of ore up here now given it took our engineers so long to walk up here we have got um, uh, actually that's going to be plenty so we've got like three times what we need roughly um, if we were to have everything on um, I think that's going to be enough so what we're going to do is we're going to start marching these guys back down here Actually, that guy who was on his long walk to the metal ore factories can now turn around and come back home. Let's just 
just group those into group two. Uh, and let's not, yeah, let's find some there. I don't want to send them somewhere with the barracks because sometimes when you send them to a barracks, they automatically put themselves in reserve, which is just a bit annoying. Uh, so let's put down our domestic price for this slightly. It's going to 90%. Nine percent. So I am quite concerned about our population. Um, now there is a couple of ways to grow population on this. So one is to um, naturally grow it. So if you have a look at our domestic settings, you can see actually where we've improved. So if you remember an episode ago, we looked at that, our immigration was like 200,000. Um, by increasing our spending on uh, uh, social services, we've basically stopped that uh, going so bad. And now immigration is kind of level with immigration. What we also want to do is Immigration can be, or immigration can be encouraged by signing free movement of labour with people who have lower GDPs than you. Because in effect, what it's saying is, um, you know, you're welcome to come here from a poorer country to a richer country. Um, so we are, I mean, our, our GDP isn't very good, um, as we know. We are way down the bottom. Where are we? We're not as bad as Ethiopia. I mean, come on. <laughs> Brazil, there we are. 247. So we've grown a fair amount um, since the start of the game. Um, so what we want to do is just pick up a few countries where they've got relatively large populations and they've got lower GDP than us. So I think... Iran may be one. I mean, they will become richer because they've got oil, I think. Um, let's just have a look. Iran. And they are cordial with us. So they may well be willing to do a... So if I go free flow of labour force and make them the offer, the offer appears acceptable. So what's probably going to happen is they come back and ask for a counter offer and ask for a couple of million. Yes, they're asking for one million. So... That's fine. Let's do that. Um, let's go back to the Atlas. So below Iran, Honduras, they've got a tiny population. Egypt, British India would be lovely to get a deal with, but you've got to get a deal with Britain itself, I think. Um, so let's see about Egypt. Again, I suspect their counter. There you go. They want two million. That's fine. Who else? Nepal, Ethiopia. Let's do Ethiopia. Yeah, they don't like that. Um, let's make them the offer and see what they come back with. And the reason is these guys are neutral towards us rather than cordial like the other guys we're offering. Yeah, so they rejected that outright. So let me see if I make them an offer with a bit of money, what they think of it. So what we're looking for is that to start turning greenish. Is there any price at which it turns green? No. <laughs> okay, so we just aren't gonna get a deal with them. That's fine. Yeah, it would have been nice to get a deal with China. China will grow massively. Um, its economy. It's got the largest population in the world but their economy will grow, which means you may find people going the other way. And they don't want to do with a deal with us either because they are not, um, they're neutral as well. Let's see if we've got any others down here. Afghanistan. 
their cult towards us. Oh, they might do a deal. Alright, let's make them the offer. See what they come back with. Okay, fine. We're happy with that. Anyone else below Afghanistan? Tibet. Yeah, Tibet we may do a deal with. These are all colonies, so you need to do deals with their overlords. So I think it's basically only Tibet who are the other one. Hmm, they don't really like us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to work out. Well, we're making the offer and see what they come back with. They're going to reject it. Our people <laughs> hate you, so any attempt at diplomacy. Are just, any attempts at diplomacy are just a waste of time. Well, you know what? Respect for being honest. <laughs> Not only did they reject it, they sent us a little side message basically saying, we don't like you. <laughs> fair play, fair play. Okay, so um, labour shortage, yeah. Unable to meet their needs for consumer goods due to high domestic pricing. Okay, well, let's lower that down a little bit again. And what this does, I mean, this is going to reduce the profit we make from selling internally. It will put demand up. And again, you know, it's so much higher than the market price. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's good to sell things to your local population if you can. Uh, so these guys have arrived here now. So we said we were going to build a new kind of supply depot uh, in the middle here. So we want to go to military. We go to air base. And the reason I'm not checking my uh, industrial goods like you often see me do before I do anything major building wise is uh, is quite simple. Let's just link that to a nearby town. Is um. That's awful and it's nowhere near anything, is it? <laughs> I mean, that might as well not be running. Let's just put a road between that and that. Um, the reason we don't check our industry, like I often do, is simply because um, we, uh, we just bought a load from the UK and Germany. Now you'll notice, I mean, You'll notice this is falling a fair amount each day now. So that's falling 10 million a day. Selling to China will help reduce the amount that's falling per day. I hope. No, it's now falling 11 million per day. China must have come in with an offer as soon as they let the last one expired. So we're falling by between 10 and 11 million a day. Um, again, you know, that's sustainable because these here are going to be built in what well, says 46 days and 68 days. But when you look at them, really, they are dropping at two days, three days per time. Yeah, there was a warning there. War declared. Japan has declared war on China. Well, that's realistic because they often do that. And actually, look at here, because I'm highlighting rubber, this, this country here, the British Malay state. So if you look at, that's just an interesting thing to know. If you look at this here, top producers, not of agriculture, of rubber, British Malay states produces 10,000 per day. Dutch East Indies produces 1,000. So this, you know, this produces like the world supply of rubber. 
Um, so we're now under a billion again, uh, which looks uncomfortable, but um, it's just the way it is. I'm going to zoom in here because I want to rename this one so that I know what it is. It is central. Uh, keep hitting B because it's getting dark here. I can't see my keyboard. <laughs> Central Brazil rubber supply. Uh, so we know what that is. Um, so just to sustain our loss making economy, again, you see, you know, as supply improves, you know we haven't built any more oil fields but we're now producing 408,000 so we're now making getting towards 300,000 of excess barrels of oil per day uh, let's see what Paris wants to offer us for that our French friends across the channel uh, given I live in the UK yeah. so yeah. I should offer them an amount which is easier for me to remember and compare. So let's go for 5 million ish barrels of oil. So they give me 48 million for that. Uh, the UK don't like us, so they've gone down to cold. Um, let's trade with them, see if that can improve it. Um, and this is where things really do change from game to game. So. The UK almost inexplicably in my last playthrough completely loved me. I sold them billions and billions of barrels of oil um, to the point where even though they run a massive uh, uh, shortfall on oil, uh, you know, several years into World War II, they didn't have to worry about oil because they had so much from me, um, they had no worries. In the words of the Jungle Book, they could forget about their worries and their strife. Yes, I know I'm not particularly funny, but I try. But I try. Yeah, let's do like for like, because we were going to do three lots of five million. Yeah, Italy. And I mean, they helped us out with some of the... Uh, selling us industry at good price, so let's do that. I worry we may slightly have oversold ourselves on oil. We sold more than we've got. I don't think so. No, we haven't. So Italy, Germany, and these guys, they all accepted. Um, it took us way back down to a million from what we had but you know we're now back over a billion so again you know we can sustain our economy and can sustain the loss we're making improving our um, so at least it's kind of stabilizing out at 2.4 now unemployment um, so we're improving our supply we're basically slowly improving our economy um, and we're funding it with sales abroad so this is you know this is all good we've got to a balanced economy we're not expanding quite as quickly as i'm used to um i don't know what's different about this game i mean these also as well i'm used to seeing these they take four days off per engineer normally they're only taking like one or two days off i mean it's just a bit it's just a little bit weird if i'm honest um, it's down to 2.3 China are back in so this is just not the um, yeah this is interesting because normally I'm used to slow and steady progress and everything great and dandy and it's just not quite as easy as it often is but that's okay because uh, government in Iraq has been overthrown in a coup and the new government loves us good for you guys I 
I do wonder if you'd like to discuss free throw of labour force now you love us. No. Okay. Okay, so, um, yeah. That's our new engineer. You can march over to there. So, yeah, our economy is, um, I mean, it's doing okay, but it is, uh, yeah, I played another game on these settings, and I'll be honest, this tactic works a lot better. So if you know anything I'm doing wrong, do let me know. Um, rubber, you see rubber's gone up because we've now got decent supply. So what we will do while we're over here is we will build some more rubber plants, assuming they're quite cheap, because obviously we're not making massive amounts of money. Let's just let this day tick over. So we're making 12 million a day. No. Something is up with our economy. It is how much coal we're buying. No, coal's about production break even. Rubber's roughly where we want it. Construction is killing us, which is these roads I was building. Ah, good, that road finished. Hmm. Just go and see if I can buy some military goods on the cheap from someone. Let's try the UK. Not quite as cheap as I was hoping. Let's try. And I want to be buying from you. You're probably not going to want to sell, are you? No, because you haven't got much. Let's try it. Italy, who were willing to help us out at all, oh, so they've got a fair stockpile. Okay, let's buy that because that gives us a bit of a buffer for a while. So what I think we're going to do next episode is we're now making, so our industry goods, we're making more than we need. We're making roughly twice what we need. Um, we want to stop stockpiling them. We want to start building up our consumer goods manufacturing because those can be sold abroad uh, for a fair amount. So let's bring our engineers over here. You want me to sell things at a loss? Uh, yeah, no thank you. They're just selling at a nice profit. Uh, so, we've got enough spare industry goods. Um, yeah, we still make it. I mean, we can use that oil to prop up the economy. Let's just see how much building a couple more rubber fields would do while we're there. So, 175 million. And so if I build two of those, that's 300 million. 
let's see just before we wrap up this episode if we can persuade Berlin to buy some of our oil and if so how much for 78 million okay so I mean this is uh, this is interesting for me I don't know how it is for you if you're noticing I'm making any big mistakes um, but the economy is kind of stuttering a little bit I'm not used to this this early uh, maybe it's because I'm approaching things differently I've moved off to um, go and invest in some rubber uh, I think what I might do is I want to prioritize building those uh, consumer goods plants um, but we are out of time again, uh, which is disappointing for me because I'm really enjoying playing this. Um, I'll probably do another episode later tonight. I've got a whole backlog of them, to be honest, to uh, edit, just put the introductory credits in and upload to YouTube. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. Hopefully uh, anyone who's watching uh, is finding it moderately entertaining as well, at least watching me struggle along through and making bad jokes about... Um, what's going on um but yeah i'm lukey p uh thank you for watching any comments do let me know do um do comment below the video uh with anything uh, about what's gone in this episode or general questions on the game um and do please like and or subscribe to my channel it really helps me out and uh, i would appreciate it so thank you very much for watching and i will see you again soon